Hello, everyone. I'm Qi Hua from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. I'm going to share our work on octo, internet training with loss of compensation and backward quantization for tiny on device learning. The magic of machine learning comes from model training on large scale data sets. With the de development in the cloud environment to meet the resource hungry demands. And this kind of in cloud computing paradigm is hard to provide personalized models and suffers from high latency and privacy leakage. These issues promote the rise of on device learning, which solves these challenges by handling the end to end learning process totally on user devices. However, the agile environment often faces with limited computational capacity and memory. Thus, breaking the resource constraints is the key to implement on-demand learning systems. Conventional model conversion methods, such as the low-rank factorization, the model pruning, and the network specification, are insufficient as they are designed for large-scale training tasks and cannot well match the properties of tiny on-device learning. And here is the workflow of a typical training procedure. Each iteration contains the forward and the backward passes. We can see that the fundamental computational cost comes from the convolutional operations and the gradient calculation. These operations can be resolved as a series of tensor dot product based on 32-bit floating point numbers. However, previous research shows that representing model parameters in such high precision is not always necessary. It is possible to represent parameters in lower bit precision while not downgrading the model card. Thus, it comes to our basic idea that handling model training in the int8 format to match the on-device resource constraints. The case of quantization is to represent data by few bits, such as from fp32 to int8. Thus, there are two cooperations. The first is number discretization, which maps real numbers from a continuous domain to some integer values. And the second is domain transformation, which bounds the value from a wider range to a smaller one such as from 32 bits to 8 bits. And why we need it? Data quantization holds two pertinent advantages. First, it enables model conversion in bit level, which can reduce memory footprint and accelerate tense operations. And second, quantization is more hardware friendly for both general hardware such as CPU and GPU, and also for specific chips, such as F FPGA, which can be easily applied to edge applications. This property helps us implement on-device learning systems in the resource constraint cases. And here, we present a case study to show the potential gains. In terms of training efficiency, memory footprint, and IO bandwidth, we can see that the int based quantization aware training can effectively alleviate system overhead while not downgrading the model quality. Therefore, we are inspired to build a lightweight int training system for the edge devices. However, existing quantization methods are not suitable for our target due to the following limitations. For example, as to the pertinent Google fake quantization aware training method in this figure, it only simulates the int8 calculations in forward pass and cannot bring actual acceleration. Simply using it to the training procedure will cause large errors of dot product and cannot guarantee model convergence. Therefore, we need to design a new quantization method for on-device learning. 
And this target requires a co-design of neural network constructor and int eight training engine. We need to address the following challenges, including accelerating processing speed, maintaining model quality, elevating system overhead, and making the system easy of use. Therefore, we present our system, Octo, a lightweight system for the tiny on-device learning. Here is the workflow of Octo with three core steps, which conducting tens of operations directly in the int8 domain and fully utilize the hardware level computational parameters. The first step is to transfer the FP32 numbers to the int8 format with stochastic routing. And the second step is to conduct dot product on the int8 tensors and return the int32 result to avoid overflow. And the third step is to convert the int32 tensors to FP32 format and compensate the error of dot products caused by step 2. And finally, we can formulate the error gap delta by the affine transformation which is handled by our loss of our conversation method. And here is the details. The conversation layer is designed as an independent component that can be added at the end of both convolutional and fully connected layers. Each conversation layer holds three lendable parameters, including the scaling factor alpha, the distribution expectation mu, and the composition offset beta. The calculation of the composition term is optimized via the element-wise broadcasting and bit-wise shifting, thus holding a slight overhead. Also, to improve the learning speed of these parameters, we design an L2 term to better capture the significance of composition parameters with a coefficient lambda. We also employ data quantization in the backward pass, as the calculation of gradients can also be abstracted as a series of dot products. First, for higher computational efficiency, we calculate gradients based on chain rules instead of numerical differential. The derivative flows will go through the entire network from the last layer to the first one, then, as the intermediate flows are also quantized before the dot product, we thus need to address the issue of zero-point offset. We propose the parameterized range clipping method in the symmetric scheme to avoid the involvement of zero-point. Thus, the clipping function bounds the values in the 88 domain. And finally, the FP32 gradients could be recovered based on the int8 dot product. We evaluate Octo on real edge devices in the production environment, such as Huawei Atlas and NVIDIA Jason Xavier. We use image classification tasks as our benchmark with two pertinent baselines, the vanilla full precision training and the fake quantization and wear training without error composition. Here, we compare the com convergence result by using different training methods. First, we can see that fake quantization fails to converge, where the curves of the loss in the black line and the accuracy in the red line almost remain unchanged. This phenomenon indicates that putting tense arithmetic between quantization and dequantization will incur huge computational errors. In contrast, Octo obtains comparable accuracy at the full precision training, thus holding a just sliding slight decreasing in most cases. We also conduct the ablation study to inspect how much improvement is achieved by our approach on the different training settings. We can see that simply using int8 data values into training will significantly decrease the model accuracy 
due to the large errors of quantize.product. And enable our LAC operation can fill this gap by learning parameters of the affine approximation. Note that directly using PRC on vanilla int age training without LAC cannot eliminate the errors of intermediate results, thus still incurring a great decrease of accuracy. However, PRC can further improve the final accuracy when LAC has been enabled, where the clipped gradients can restrict the training procedure in a proper convergence boundary. And as model parameters and tensors arithmetic are converted in the int8 format, Octo can effectively reduce IO bandwidth and the computational pressure. Therefore, Octo improves the image processing throughput over the 32-bit parameter-based inference. And here, we give deep insights into how Octo works and visualize the intermediate tensor distribution of a convolutional layer's output. Fake quantization holds a distinct distribution because conducting dot products in the quantized domain will incur significant errors to the final output. In contrast, the composition layers inside Octo can fill the error gap and achieve similar distribution as FB32 does. Therefore, the model accuracy is maintained. And we measure the average computational time cost of different stage in each iteration. We can see that although Octo introduces extra overhead of data quantization, about a 15% increase on average, it still will reduces the completion time of both forward and backward passes thus holding a shorter pre-iteration time. And also, we monitor the real-time memory footprint due to the int8 parameters and the gradient quantization. Octo can effectively reduce both average and peak memory usage. Such a reduction makes it possible to deploy VGG-like models. Well, finally, we will draw the conclusion of our work. We show that introducing int-8 quantization to training is a feasible way to implement on-device learning in practice. We design a novel int-8 training method which optimizes the operations of forward and backward passes via the loss of our compensation and the parameter parameterized range clipping methods, respectively. We present Octo, a lightweight system for tiny on-device learning. Evaluations show that Octo holds a higher training efficiency of state-of-the-art quantity methods and preserves comparable model quality as the full precision training does. And that's all. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Thank you.